Collaborative. I'm Amy Alexander. I'm Dave Mills. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what you do when there's a million marketing options for you um, and how you can sort of narrow down and figure out where you should be putting your money to get the most value. You know, Amy, for a lot of folks, it ends up being a push and pull between what we've always done and these new things that we can do now. Which one do we pick? And, you know, sometimes we just default by becoming totally tactical. We just pick this and pick that and pick this and try and smash them all together and hope that somehow they work. So to be strategic, what, where do we start? Well, a good place to start is just by thinking about what are all the things that you're already doing on digital. If you make a list of all the places you're investing in digital, that's a great way to start. So you might be doing some things like digital ads. You're probably doing some social networking. You might be paying for some network placements like Yelp or YP. You also might even be paying for referral site placements. Uh, some people get recruited by local newspapers to pay for local search that the newspapers are supposed to drive. And others will even pay for video ads. What can you think of to add to that? Uh, well, the obvious ones would be my website, um, maybe my email if I'm paying for some kind of service like MailChimp or something. Um, I don't know, maybe video channels? Yeah, video channels like YouTube Okay. Would be another example so of that. So where do those land? I know you've talked some about some things are rent in marketing and some things are owned. So right. what makes something rent and own and what does that mean? Right, so you know, just like real estate, um, there's things that we might lease or rent so we can grow or we can kind of manage some risk. Um, but there are other things that we own. They, they build value. They're things that we can establish and they can actually help us drive revenue. And so in marketing, there are some things that we rent and we do not own. And there are some things that we can own and they build value for us and help us to earn more money. So a good example would be social networking. Do you think social networking is owned or rented? I mean, I have all these likes. I have 10,000 likes. People like me. Do I own that or am I just renting it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I would think that you own that. Well, I would think so too, but really, I don't own it because okay. Facebook owns it or Twitter owns it. Makes sense. And I might have the luxury of using it, but they're really making money off of me. Um, sometimes I have to even pay for boosts on there, right? So I don't own that list, and they can and they do just change the rules anytime they want. Okay. So what are, I mean, there have to be two or three from the things that we named earlier that are owned. What are those? Well, for certainly our website is one thing that we own. Um, we own our email, and uh, if we have a list that we're building, and then we can also own our inbound marketing. So we should talk about those three things, okay. website, email, and inbound. Okay. So with a website, if that's an owned sort of asset, um, where your website is, that's kind of like real estate, right? Just so like it, yeah. It's the place where you're converting leads. It's the place um, where you're really growing the value. So I would think some ways to invest in websites might be uh, to make it mobile friendly. For sure. To make sure that when someone goes on your uh, website on their smartphone, they're getting a really great experience. Some of that might also come from investing in some UX, user experience right. information and building out. Um, optimizing. Well, optimizing is really important. You know, just like real estate, and the, the motto in real estate is location, location, location. Right. So the same thing is true in your website. Where you come in the search determines whether or not people are going to, to come to your business and find you. The top three is the place to be. And, you know, you can be in the top ten, and that's better. But the top three is really the majority of all clicks online. Yeah, Jennifer, one of our partners, likes to call that top three the snack pack. That's right. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty new to Google. So also fresh content, I would think, is a way that you can really help that owned asset. It's your content, right. it's on your website, and you're building information that your customers want. Is that right? That's right, because Google's looking for fresh content, and your customers don't want to come back and find just the exact same things they already found, because that tells them they don't need to come back again because it's like a billboard. And so don't view your website as a billboard. View it as something that is building and growing and you're investing in to create a really great experience for your customers. So what about the email asset? How do you, how do you invest in that? Well, email, you know, as you're building an email list, um, that creates a real asset. You can actually put that into a business opportunity and sell it because those are people that have said they're interested in what you have to offer. And you have access to them and you can say whatever you want about social. 
but the truth is that email is still creating about a $44 return for every dollar you invest. Wow. That's so creating a lot. an email <laughs> list, yeah, creating an email list is really gold for many, many businesses as long as they treat them right. Okay. So the last thing we talked about was inbound. Inbound is something that Story Collaborative uh, does and is really passionate about. And what that means is, in traditional marketing, you have this interruptive pattern. You want to make customers stop what they're doing and pay attention to your brand. But in inbound, you're attracting them with the kinds of content they want. So what are some ways to invest in that inbound marketing? Well, think first of all about giving customers what they're looking for when they're already searching, because that means they're a qualified customer because they're looking for you. And provide content that helps them solve their problems. Our problem is we want to sell them something. Their problem is they're trying to meet a need. Yeah. So give them content, articles, ebooks, graphics, videos that really help them solve what they're working on, what they're trying to figure out. Awesome. Well, I hope this was helpful, certainly helpful to me. Yeah, I think, you know, if you think of your digital presence as something you can own and invest in, you'll create an asset that will help your business to really flourish and grow. Awesome. Hey, one thing that might be helpful to you in investing in inbound marketing is building some buyer personas. That will teach you what you should be writing and what kinds of content your customers are looking for. If you check out our blog on storycollaborative.com, you can find a free tool there that will help you build. Thank you.